So we're going to head over to our because they're about to go out of the airplane and drop in onto Miramar with John Allen and Blink. Yep, well, I mean, we're hopefully not going to be dropping out of the the plane too fast. I mean, we're not going to be hitting the ground like that, but hopefully we'll be staying alive, as will most of these other teams. Certainly one of them will be staying alive the longest. Someone's got to. Uh, absolutely. Someone's got to stay towards that top sign um, because otherwise that whole plane's going down. It's got to make <laughs> the return trip too uh, for dropping those crates. True. These guys on the plane, they've got a tough job. Shout so out these, to the plane pilots. Yeah, I mean, Shout out to the pilots. Shout out to the players, all right. <laughs> um, but yes, all these players will also have a tough time in these games going forward. Finishing off with double Miramar to cap off our day. Obviously, we've done all of our angles so far already. Um, a really difficult circle, that last one over on our last match. Um, DRS, again, though, I think that when it comes to this team, even when it is a difficult circle like that, you're still seeing this really smart level of play coming through for them. They're very cognizant of where these areas are in the map that have just these little gaps in between the teams where they can inject themselves, find a very decent position, and now they're not even afraid to take these fights. They've gained a lot of confidence over the past few days, which is fantastic to see. Well, past couple of days at this point in time. Uh, but they've gained a lot of confidence here in the All-Stars tournament, uh, and I think that's allowing them to take these fights that they wouldn't necessarily take before, where they'd find a gap that wasn't exactly ideal. But this time around, they're just taking the fight, getting an ideal compound, and playing from there. And that was a really strong position on the map. It was great that the circle came over towards them in the end, but even then, they were one of the few teams that still had a compound to play in that had still some area going up towards the circle. DRS up to 93 points now, second place. Vampire 104, so 11 points separate them. And at this early stage of the tournament, that is very closable. I say early, over halfway through. At this stage in the tournament, it is definitely a closable gap. We've seen it done in less than a game. So we'll see what more challenges they can throw towards the top of those tables. Either way, we said Vampire looked pretty good to qualify as top six over the course of their performance from yesterday and the start of today. Even though it hasn't been as strong as it was yesterday, Vampire still looking very solid to get one of those qualification spots. I would now say that DRS in a similar spot when it comes to the probability that they'll be seen in that top six and make their way to the final stages. I'll swing over towards the Infinity. Ferrari goes down quite quickly there. So the Infinity will be playing on with three members going forward. That's plane path did force a lot of these teams off towards our eastern side. Our circle did head over towards Monte Nuevo and El Pozzo that way. So again, for Gladiators, we just saw them on our screens. A team that would really like to get some points this time around. I think if they can end the day with maybe a 10-point average over the next two games, they'll be very pleased with that one. Sem9 also rocking up over towards Alpha 7. Revo down, star player on the side immediately. Their smoke's down. They're getting their boy back up because he is certainly important to the livelihood of this squad. A very, very key part of the roster right now. And Alpha 7 need all the strength they can get, to be fair, because they have been, I think, underperforming their expectation, almost certainly. This was a team that people were predicting to uh, win over on the main stage. And right now, they are middle of the tables overall. They're in ninth place. It's not the team that we wanted to see. No, not at all. 50 points currently, sat in ninth place, so three points away from qualifying if they could because they already are in that main tournament. Um, they have already qualified for it. You know, you could be that one guy that says, oh, they're just reserving their energy <laughs> for the main tournament. Um, but I think that the way we've seen Alpha 7 play in the past, it's quite effortless the way they take control of a lot of these maps. So I'm not sure what's going on here, um, but there's certainly something that needs fixing uh, a little bit. And I think for the guys on Alpha 7, they'll be looking into that rigorously. You know that the coach over there is looking to see what's going wrong after so much success. You come over here, which is arguably I would say a little bit of an easier lobby, right? Uh, we do have some teams within here that I think the Alpha 7 should absolutely trounce, um, but they're just not. So I can no longer have 
that kind of say into these games. Matic sending off once again. This guy has gotten to a fair few fights so far over a couple of teams. Had to drink a little bit of an energy drink to get himself back up to full. Uh, and then takes another engagement with the guys from Alpha 7 who are just harassing them time and time again. North George now heading up towards La Cobradilla. He's sent that information back and the rest of Gladiator is starting to group up just a little bit. The Gladiator is making their way down a little bit further, hopefully, to regroup. Tixie's still very isolated as it stands, about a kilometer away, uh, which means that any push onto his position basically is on his own at this stage. So a little regroup in their near future, you'd imagine, but not really pressing right now. No one looking to try and take that position. On the northeast side, the De Gladiators went down to them last game on an unfortunate set of trades, 1v1s, and giving a little bit too much on their push. Yokohama Donuts, the team that took them down last time, moving in through Torre Armada and potentially moving parallel to the Gladiators. Yeah, the play was certainly sloppy, right? Uh, I think that's the best way to describe it. It didn't feel like Gladiators. A lot of times Gladiators win out on fights just by setup alone. Uh, I don't think, and I will continue to say this, I don't think that they have the best gun skill in a lot of lobbies internationally. Uh, I think what they really reveled on was that macro side of things. They were very good at controlling where their rotations were going to be, which third parties they wanted to take, and which were going to be inefficient to their game plan. Uh, and that's what get, uh, Gladiators were very good at. So when you see a setup to an engagement like that, which is just essentially tossing the vehicles at the building, um, and then praying that you win the, get, win the fight out mechanically, just does not make sense to me. And again, Gladiators are one of these teams that really does want to qualify through in that top six. It's important to them. Um, in the meantime, you've got R8 down towards that south side west of San Martin, quite close towards the central area. S2G have also been getting quite far into a lot of these games, but that's mainly by just hanging on towards that center side and trying to fight out against any team that rocks up on them. They're going to go for a similar kind of strategy. It isn't really banking them a lot of points. You can see it on your screen there over on the right hand side. 48, so they're really in that middle pack at the moment. <laughs> really having trouble here. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ali finally able to get out of the ditch in the party bus. I think that was about a 17 point turn, but in the end, the axles cooperate and he just abandons it anyway. Doesn't need it anymore. It's giving him enough trouble. That is unfortunate. He probably could have just ran there in the first place, picked up that vehicle and got on his merry way. So again, he kept him safe though. You know, if there was any prey and eyes, the party bus is a veritable shield in a lot of situations. Infinity, we saw them lose a player earlier on, John. Down to just three now. Not ideal. Here are our pilots back again to drop off some goods. Where will they gift those level three augments to teams' arsenals? Circle just about to pop as well as we're sitting on the west side of Miramar. Two teams out on the southeast side, D plus, Kia and Aton as well, playing over near Puerto Paraiso and on that south edge. Ooh. The biggest shrink that we see on Miramar, this zone two uh, shrink, goes over towards Monte Nuevo and cuts Ladriera with a slice of the pie too. Yeah, really kind of an awkward circle for these teams because it's not fully down towards Ladriera side. So taking advantage of these high grounds is a little bit more dangerous for some of these teams. You can see Falcons heading over that way to begin with. I think the, your main worry is that most teams will know of these pretty priority compounds over towards La Driera. And if you start making your way down those mountainside, there should be a lot of eyes over towards that position. Whereas as you head down, though, over towards Monte Nuevo, it's quite barren around that edge of the city itself. So. With 18 teams still alive, 69 players still in the lobby, there's certainly going to be a lot of shooting here on forwards. I don't think that this is the kind of circle that can maintain that amount of teams for very long. Vampire lost a player to Mazexis on the eastern side of this circle. They didn't manage to get a building into the next circle, though, so it'll be okay for now. Gladiators being forced out by Yokohama Donuts to play a little bit, actually very split, uh, from one another. They really don't want to be locked into an engagement right now. They'll have to make their way past El Pozzo. Yeah, a regroup like this is not easy for the guys from Gladiators. They're going to have to send several different directions. Kitsune is heading all the way over towards this western side. 
whereas Maku is exploring the edge towards the east. Most likely will recall Kitsune now to head towards the rest of the team now that they've found a path through that is safe. I8 in the meantime, EZM gets cut down by Ravenclaw. Well found. Vampire still hold on the southeast side now. They're going to say backed off for the time being. Misclick there from Blade. Wanted to get into the buggy. Popped a shot. Either way, they knew he was there, so it's not too much of a surprise. Mazex is still being held out further southeast, despite already having taken down a player from Vampire. They haven't opted to go for that full push it. Yeah, obviously Vampire losing a player like this isn't ideal, and I think that Vampire most likely will switch into a more elimination-focused game for themselves now. It won't necessarily mean they're getting a high placement like Stone went for last game, but I think that they do need to start picking up some eliminations because the three players on this southeast edge, it's quite awkward terrain to head up towards this northeast side uh, anyway, uh, northwest side anyway, so I think for Vampire, yeah, try and take up this position, which is very, very strong within the map. We see a lot of times uh, teams picking up this spot just because of the high ground it offers you up towards that top side. It's got great little spots you can take shots towards teams, potentially pick up a knock here and there, maybe elimination, because getting further than this for Vampires will be tough. What's Katsune still doing up there? He's having a picnic, I think. Either way, the gladiators, well, three of them, have moved down south just on the northern prong of Montenuevo now. They've got a pretty solid position with the circle shifting up northwest as well. Cuts Ladriera out. So they will have to be teams moving up from that southeast side into these hills. Mazexis going up against Aegon XI8. It's not going too well, really, for either of these two rosters. They're both having trouble with it. Absolutely. There's a lot of sight lines actually looking down here. I mean, DRS are in this location, Vampire in this location. I think DRS was just a little bit further ahead of Vampire. So for Mazexis as well as IA, a little bit of a rough return in towards this circle. But a Monte Nuevo finish, perhaps even an urban finish coming into this end game. You see a lot of teams picking up these compounds. Now, this is the type of circle that if you can get in quickly, yes, you can maintain quite a massive amount of players and teams oh. in this lobby, but it's getting into it in the first place. There's so many other teams that were ahead of you in the queue. They've swiped their ticket. They're already in these buildings. Oh, lovely nade in through the window from Murnat. Nails it. Absolutely. Blasts them away. Not really too much you could do about that. And another nade nearly takes down the player, but stays alive for now. Cute Loki. We saw him clutch it out last time around. We'll be able to go for the flush this time, but instead leaves someone up and ready to frag. Hoygaard is ready and ready to go, but now as a lone ranger against three, it's going to be really tricky to get this one done. We've seen it done before, but doesn't seem to have the DBS in the arsenal and faces off against them. It's the M249 in the end to land the shot, and that's Infinity IQ eliminated. First team to go down, Yangon Galacticos will pick themselves up a position on the outer edges of the city itself of Monte Nuevo. Gladiators finally regroup with S2G just down towards their south side. You can see that right now on your screens. Mini 14 in the hand of Meku looking down towards the position. Tixie looks to be looking over towards Romeo Boy, who is very much split off from the rest of his team over in Monte Nuevo itself. So hoping to regroup soon. But for Gladiator, it's a difficult rotation in. Equally for Yokohama, they're up towards that north side. They'll have to push down through these fields, through these roaded areas. Alpha 7 also would like to get in. But we have so many teams already in that center area. BTR, R8. You have Yangon Galacticos, Sem9 over towards that northern edge. Aton are trying to get in, but DRS keeping things cool and cozy over towards the eastern side. Falcons with the home team support. Playing with four players on that southwest side along the road. A tricky route in towards Monte Nuevo on that crossroads. Trying to make their presence felt, but they have to shift up north. This is good news for Yokohama Donuts, for Gladiators, for Alpha 7, because all of these teams on the south are going to cut each other down to size and make them bite size for these teams up there. Massively. If you are Team Falcons, Aton, Ikerd, Vampire, you know, a lot of these teams in Monte Nuevo, they won't be leaving anytime soon. They would much rather clear up the mess that is this southern side, massive players, 
as opposed to leaving. So you're already seeing FaZe, BTR all taking shots out. Surprisingly, King's able to take a shot backwards over towards BTR themselves. And I think D plus Kia have actually rocked up on their position and looking to dismount them from Monte Nuevo. A really nice push in. Satan, Favian and Forrest are all in already. BTR close to D plus Kia, not the safest of positions. But we've seen great things from both of these rosters. Nades up through the window. It's a three versus three on the western point of Monte Nuevo. Ryzen trying to maneuver on the outside. A lead in through the window from Yuhai, but backed off by some bullets from across the across the buildings. Saden wants to answer, but neither team wants to pull the trigger fully on this fight. And to be fair, you probably don't want to in terms of that overall strategy. You're in the next circle anyway. Losing players now is just bad. It's just it's just a bad time for your route out of this circle, route out of this urban environment. Yeah, for a lot of these teams, they'd rather group up now and play it that teamwork to get rid of a lot of these teams over towards that southern side of the map. D plus Kia, they've been allowed in. They're renting the room now from BTR at this point in time. Uh, it is interesting to see Ryzen in, and it's even more interesting to see Lapa out because he was so good yesterday and today as well. Um, so I'm interested to see why exactly they have pulled Lapar out for Ryzen. It might just be because it's the role change. So you're taking a fragger out for a fragger to maintain the stability of the team um, with the roles that they have within. So I think that could definitely be the reason behind it. But again, it's great to see Ryzen back on the international stage now. Lovely to see him here. Vampire looking to make their way in. They actually did a decent job. They cleaned up a lot of IA. They will have to flip around the side now, but unbeknownst to them, DRS are up towards their northern edge, but they've just started to make a move outwards over the road. This is a dangerous push. Tony K with stoned in tow. Going across open ground, but they're fairly confident in it. Nearly takes a tumble, but they're up to the rock. This is, I mean, it's very exposed, but nobody is looking this way right now. They're all on the other side of the road and they're preoccupied. DRS certainly is as SEM9 rolls up into the thick of it. Kenny has the DBS. This is dangerous territory, <laughs> but finally gets caught up in the tires of the buggy. Two players down for DRS. They're currently resable, but you imagine that's going to get taken away from them very, very quickly. Tan wow. gets across and pops a nade back in. Killer falls down to a nade. The res going to be enacted for DRS and they haven't gone for the flushes yet of SEM. Kenny does not get picked up there by teammate. He has the backup instead. Moving on through, wants to try and keep the pressure up and deny oh, these no. reses. Tam goes for the flush, but there's a shot from across the way. And now Delta can start to cook this nade. Mikiel is low. It pops it up through the vehicle and pops it as well with the flashbang. Delta taken down to half HP and two players on the inside. One player active on the out. DRS looking to try and stay alive now with two. It's a difficult task, but it is a team that is up to it. Two players now, DRS, played some real good shenanigans in this fight. Killer with an excellent pre-fire over towards these players from Sem9. Ooh. He has another nade as well, has to back off as shots come through from Alpha 7. We'll place another one around the side. Somehow, Mikhail is still alive inside this container. Goodness me. Gets away with it as well, and those nades are not going to touch him whatsoever. And Killer seems to think that if he just keeps tossing them, he's going to get them in. But Mickey Al right now is completely safe. I and that's six grenades down. I don't think there's any cheeky little terrain bumps there that can bank it off and get it into the dumpster, into the skip. But still, DRS cut down, cut in half. As the circle keeps the urban environment into the fight and actually makes the fields to the north of Monte Nuevo, the open ground, a little bit more treacherous and forces these teams to the north to have the problems of their own. Yeah, if you're a team towards that northern side, you do technically have a little bit of an advantage because you're more maneuverable than those teams down towards the south side. The issue for these guys is that you really have to just stay on the edge of this circle now because you start to get a little bit too close to this open area. The teams from the south, that is not team fire. That is <laughs> that is lobby fire coming at you, honestly. <laughs> it is horrible to come up against. So I think right now for a lot of teams like Yokohama, as well as Alpha 7, uh, S2G, Gladiators, they just want to stay out of dodge as long as possible. Kitsune will pick up Romeo Boy, who was very split off from his team a long, long time. And now they can fully focus over towards S2G, who are in the compound underneath them. 
Mafioso trying to put nades downhill and a lot of damage felt there as the knock finally. Ali taken low and Mafioso still with the happy feet on the mountaintop. Ali very, very low. Gets the heal off. Nade being cooked. Taken down very quickly again. Unknown is there on the off angle. Mafioso just can't catch a break. Cannot peak this ridge line. Yeah, like I said, that lobby fire is coming in clutch. Look at all those players off in the distance, all wielding those three X's, those four X's, taking shots their way. Even Team Falcons have to expend as many smokes as possible. In the meantime, Gladiators are somewhat safe because they are just hiding behind S2G, but at some point they will either have to push over towards Yokohama's position or over towards S2G. Mafioso. Isolated now, wanted to deal with Ica, drop down and regroup with the rest of the roster for Alpha 7. But at this stage, they have been severed. That supply line is not there anymore. Cut off by Falcons. What more can you do? Drop down, I guess. Just go for the fight. That's going to work out. First aid. Is it going to be in time? Just misses it, unfortunately. It was just too slow. Can you crawl on through there? He might be able to get to the zone. Center Texa wants to move out, but... If you can get through, good, but no, cut down, out in the blue. That is really unfortunate for Alpha 7, losing the Mafioso there. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult push for him versus Ica. They had to really speed up that engagement between them and Ica, but Team Falcons obviously had oversight. And speaking of Team Falcons, what a wonderful run from them. I mean, maintaining four players from that side of the map on the southern side versus a lot of these teams that have had sight lines towards them. Really good use of utility and smokes, getting those vehicles through and finding those positions that they can play in. Up against Yangon Galacticos, is Vampire already? Burnout Boy comes out through the side with the DBS, which seems... Oh. Seems to be their kryptonite, but Kitsune, he's got overhead. He's taking shots down towards him, already takes down one. Only gets the one player from Vampire all the way flushed. And I don't think Stone knew where those shots are coming from, but S2G, you've got to make Gladiators' lives just that little bit harder. The nade goes a little bit long towards the back lines for S2G, but the forward two are not so lucky. Razy, Kelsey both going to fall down here. Tixie wow. gets lit up, Silas with the SKS. A lot of ammo in the back pocket as well. Plenty more damage to do as Kitsune taken down to half HP. They back him off. The Gladiators are going to have to get this res right now if they want to keep four players alive, if they want to move forwards to the circle at full strength. Even then, it might not be at that, st at that, at that level. King is many of those heals off as possible, as quickly as they can. FaZe coming in now, they hear the shots. And these guys love the third party. Oh. They love what he came through the last game. It saved their lives, but I think they've just jumped into a bee's nest that they maybe didn't want to assault. This is outside of the zone too, so FaZe is taking a very questionable play here. I think it was the only position they could go to. They swerved off course, and now Gladiators are fine. They're like, yeah, you deal with S2G. I think we're going to head down towards the circle alongside this Rich. Uh-oh, Revo with a DBS in the corner. It's devilish to deal with, and too much for the Falcons. They move up. One goes down. Revo half HP on the corner, but it's not going to matter. One more now to step into the breach, but it's not going to happen. Not this time, anyway. He needs to pop the reload. His teammates falling around his ears. Center Tex has been knocked. A nade on the corner could be good to find a little bit of damage, but not really going to get too much more than that. The heal from Revo can start to be enacted, and on the western side, they're still in the zone. It is terrifying going up against this guy. He dances the beat of the DBS as he comes around the corner. I think right now Team Falcons have met their match with six off in the distance. Obviously, A7 will have one player down. And there it comes. Yokohama took down Gladiators last game. Gladiators just went up against FaZe, were able to clear out the majority of them, but they're out in the blue now. With teammates suffering, they should just be able to get into the circle, have to drop some smokes, but Maku will be flushed out entirely. Matic still on that backstop position. A difficult run from those hills. Aton in the meantime from the south side of Montenuevo needing to push through BTR and doing good work right now. Two players alive for BTR as we hop back over towards Alpha 7 who have finally cleared out the Falcons. BTR get wiped away by Aton and now they'll need to push even further north through the urban environment here. Two of their players down, just Zohan left. And there's players looking their way. Those shots will have drawn attention. And the circle goes all the way outside. Getting down from this position. Getting out from this position for RA. 
A Sem 9 Alpha 7 will be very difficult. Look how calm this guy is. He's just sidestepping bullets. Looks like a superhero in action. It's insane to me. He even takes a shot around the side, assuming that there's a player behind the smoke. Always thinking one step ahead. This guy's playing in the future a lot of times, which must be very difficult, but you respect it either way. Gladiators over towards that northeast side. They still have Yokohama to deal with. who are all the way towards that north. And Alpha 7 are moving out. Now it's two players from Yokohama in front of them. The rest of Yokohama will have to move over. That will open up a gap for Gladiators to move in. This could be a good time. If they hear the vehicles moving across, Gladiators need to take advantage of this. I think they have seen it. The Yokohama Donuts Marrow position has been such a quiet presence in these northern hills, but it's been felt lobby-wide at this stage. Everybody's been funneled around them. And finally, the Gladiators are able to open up. A first shot lands from Kitsune. Three players are alive on the side of Gladiators and they'll move on up a little bit closer. They've got a tree, they've got the top of that ridge line in this next zone, and the Yokohama Donuts trying to get this fight done, but Alpha 7 have other ideas. Ozi-san next to fall, and only one player now left standing, Kazimaru, dispatched. Across the way, it's the Gladiators to take the shots, and now they can just continue to rattle off these magazines towards Alpha 7. They roll straight on up as well, Matic almost going down, but just about ducks behind. Kitsune, not so lucky. Tixie needs to hold this one down, but Revo lights them up, and another knock sent over towards the Gladiators, overzealous and predicted by Alpha 7. They get cut out. I think for Gladiators there, what they expected was a far weakened Alpha 7. But they confidently took that fight with Gladiators helping. And I don't know why they assumed there would be anything different. And again, Alpha 7 were able to recover very, very quickly in that engagement. So Senataxa, Carrillo, Revo, all ready and raring to go into this match from a very, very tricky spot within the circle to make it here. And I think Donuts sent everything they had at them. Fortunately for the Donuts, Gladiators, that presence was definitely felt. And they wanted a little bit of payback. Just a touch. But this is the Alpha 7 that we've been expecting to see for so long. And we have not been gifted with this performance so far. Really great for them to be able to step up here. Challenge for one of those top six spots. Milios goes down, and with it, Aton Esports in fifth. Twelve eliminations now racked up by Alpha 7, with four more on the cards, a maximum point scoring on the game of 26, should they be able to pick up all four of these points. And they're going to go for it, because Dixie, next on the cards, has got that auto shotgun, steps out wide, Carrillo lands that spray, but it's Senatexa to be able to shut it down with the DBS. Alpha 7 pick up the first of potentially four. Vampire may be next on the menu. Stylish play as well. My guy leaped on the back of the buggy with the DBS in hand. I think Tixi was just too much for him to bear. Again, fourth place, though, with the seven eliminations that they found on that fight or on this game. That's really good. It was much needed points that had to come through. And I think they played that game a lot smarter. It was much more under control of how they like to play it. Again, some of those decisions towards the end game, which we talk about that execution from them, which isn't there at the moment, are still coming into play. Ragnarok has little to do in this scenario. As Alpha 7, I put it earlier, you know, they're quite effortless at taking these games, winning these matches. And this is how it's felt to me this time on this match. Stone steps outside and breaks very wide. Revo wastes no time and Senna Tex are there with the team fire. A little bit bold there from Stone for my liking. And Alpha 7 will capitalize. He sees Revo moving oh in. God. But what can you do? There is so little that you have in your back pocket, in your arsenal. And Revo will clean it up. The janitor of the lobbies. And that is all the points going their way. Alpha 7 perform at the standard we expected. 25 points and a blinder of a chicken dinner plank.